Whether you love them, or probably more likely hate them, you have to hand it to GameStop for being able to generate over $9.2 billion of revenue in 2017. That's massive, and it places them at number 322 on the Fortune 500 list. But then again, another company that sold games also held around that same position on the list way back in 2006. And I'm sure that when that GameStop logo came on the screen, you probably had an emotional reaction to it. A visceral reaction. And from a quick scan of YouTube videos on the topic, this is more or less reflected. And I have to say that I largely agree with the sentiment. I believe that they've ripped the soul out of what game stores used to be. They aggressively compel their employees to push products and programs that often do a complete disservice to the gamer. And they've managed to squeeze out many of the more honest and authentic game shops that used to thrive in our communities. But this video isn't going to be about my opinion. Instead, this video is going to present a brief exploration of GameStop and attempt to evaluate their precarious business position. There's a ton of bad news for GameStop going around. Anecdotally, gamers talk about GameStop being on their last legs. Well, in this analysis, I'm going to take a good look at the numbers behind those legs and see just how close those knees are to buckling. So the stage is set. Now let's roll out the numbers. Let's just start with a quick look at total revenues since 2014. And with the exception of a big dip in 2016, GameStop revenues have been mostly flat. But even this relatively flat line betrays the volatility that lies just below the surface. Here's a snapshot of GameStop's revenue categories in 2017. New and used games make up just over 50% of their total revenues. New hardware, another 20%. Now two categories here really tell the GameStop story. Number one, digital sales. At just 2% of their total revenues, it's way too small. Something we'll explore more in a minute. And number two, collectibles, with a 7% share of their total revenues. This is the category that GameStop seems to be pinning their hopes on. Again, more on this one in a minute. And if we turn the page and look at the dollar amounts behind these percentages, you can really see how important new game sales are to the company. Over $2.5 billion of revenues was from the sale of physical new games. Used products is also a massive category at over $2 billion in 2017. And again, the smallest slice is the digital products at $189 million. Now let's shrink this graphic so that we can add profit margins to each of these categories. Now it's easy to see that while new software is the largest revenue source, gross profit on new software is among the smallest in the company. And new hardware, another major source of revenue, has razor thin gross profit margins, just 9%, while used products, tech brands, and collectibles all have high gross profit margins. And hence why the company is pushing those products so heavily when you walk into their stores. But now let's introduce time into the analysis the most important variable. How are these revenues shifting over time? This is where we begin to see just how shaky those legs are. Comparing 2017 to 2014, revenue from new software decreased by over half a billion dollars. And used products? Well, those are down by over 200 million dollars. And that has to be terrifying for GameStop, given that we just saw the very high profit margins associated with used games. That's their bread and butter. Revenue from new hardware is also down big, and would have surely been much worse without the sales from the Nintendo Switch in 2017. And on top of all that, digital sales are down by over $27 million. Something we'll come back to in a moment. Now there are some positives. Accessories, tech brands, and collectibles are all up with collectibles being up over half a billion dollars. And these are the high profit margin areas that GameStop is desperate to grow in order to stabilize their business. But that's just it. This feels desperate. And if you've been into a GameStop lately, you know all the crap that litters the shelves, all the t-shirts, all the toys, everything they've got strewn about the store. It's a band-aid on a gushing open wound. So now let's look at the underlying cause of these shifts. The overall gaming market. First up, the physical market for new games and new hardware. And from 2014 to 2016, the market for physical games and systems dropped substantially, at least until 2017 when the Switch gave the physical market a nice expansion. And look at GameStop's share of that market, the revenues from that market that they capture. 
In 2014, they had physical game and system sales of $5.1 billion. That means that they captured roughly 23% of the entire market. And in the years that followed, their share of the physical market has remained fairly steady at around 23 to 24%. So they've got a consistent death grip on a steadily declining marketplace. And maybe that's not the end of the world. But here's the big problem that everybody's talking about, the digital market. And from 2014 to 2017, the digital market has been absolutely blowing up. These are estimates from GameStop's own annual report. They're well aware of the situation. And while the digital market has been blowing up, the share of revenues that GameStop has been able to capture in that market has been DOA. In 2014, they sold about $216 million worth of digital products. That was about 3% of the total digital market. And in the years since, they've actually rolled backward, capturing less than 1% of the digital market in 2017. A $21 billion marketplace, and they only captured $189 million of it. That's horrendous, and it's going to spell the end of GameStop if they can't figure something out beyond stuffed animals and silly t-shirts. Knees are buckling badly, and here's the effect of those knees buckling. Here are the number of stores that GameStop either opened or acquired over the last five years. Looks like things are okay, right? Well, not once we add the stores that GameStop closed over each of those years. Huge amounts. They're closing way more stores than they're opening. These are real people losing their jobs. And whether or not we like the company, we don't want to see people out of work. But that's just what's happening on a major scale. And if we add all of this up, GameStop has opened around 300 stores over the last five years. But they've closed over a thousand. A net loss of over 700 stores. And let's consider for a moment that between 5 and 8 people work at your typical GameStop. This means that the company has likely had to part ways with somewhere between 4 and 6,000 employees. Now I'm sure that a lot of those employees were relocated to other stores, but how many? Now among all the doom and gloom in this analysis, there is one bright spot. Game Informer Magazine. GameStop's in-house gaming magazine. Well, it's a bright spot, kind of. Subscriptions have been slipping into a nosedive over the last few years, but they did manage to pull the nose up in 2018. And I'm guessing that's largely due to the Nintendo Switch driving foot traffic into stores where people can fall victim to aggressive sales tactics. Or maybe they just really do like that magazine. All of the information in this video came from GameStop's own annual reports. Check out the link in the description if you'd like to take a look at those. They're pretty interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider a like, a comment, or a sub if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, all the best and the sky is the limit.